Scoot up for a second and let's talk. Yo, DJ, roll that beautiful champagne footage. Welcome to Champagne Secrets, where the bubbles are crisp, the secrets are smoother than silk, and the gossip flows like the finest champagne. Big up yourself, Impress. Glasses up to the streets that never sleep and to the secrets running deep. Let's get it. Champagne secrets. Confidence, my beauties and bows. Welcome to the chalet. Located in Champagne City, baby. <laughs> you see it. Come join me, the Empress, for some grown discussions and bubbly banter. Over here, we give classy with a twist, huh? A little clink with chaos with a side of charm. So if you're ready to sip, savor, and spill, then get in here. And if you're a non-alcoholic kind of confidant, it's all good, baby. Grab you a non-alcoholic bubbly and come on in. And if you're joining us in the morning, throw you some orange juice in and make it a mimosa. <laughs> Tell your friends about us. And if you don't mind, my loves, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button because we have a few people unlocking the videos. Mm, mm, mm. How can you unlike all of this positivity? <laughs> As for me, you know I'm sipping on my Moet and Chandon Imperial Rosé. <laughs> you see it. You see it. Now scoot up for a second and let's get ready for our affirmations and encouragement. Raise your glasses high. I am like a rose, delicate yet resilient, beautiful yet strong. Like the rose, I bloom despite the thorns of life. My journey is a tapestry of growth, each challenge shaping me into a more beautiful version of myself. I embrace my uniqueness, knowing that it is my strength. Just as the rose radiates beauty and grace, I too radiate my inner light for all to see. I am a masterpiece in the making, a symphony of petals unfurling in the sunlight. With each breath, I inhale the fragrance of possibility, exhaling doubt and fear. Each day is a new petal unfurling, revealing the beauty within. I am a rose in full bloom, embracing my flaws and imperfections as part of my beauty. I stand tall, my roots grounded in self-love and acceptance. I am a rose, blooming in the garden of life. A symbol of resilience and strength, my thorns are a reminder of the battles I fought and won. I am a survivor, a warrior, a testament to the power of perseverance. Like a rose, I am bold, vibrant, and unapologetically me. So cheers to you, my confidant, for you are worth it. Some of y'all just need to add some positivity to your life and see doesn't it change everything else. <laughs> so y'all, I told y'all that I would start changing up the content that I do on my platform, right? So I came across this show, Traders, 
And baby, when I tell you, I have been hooked ever since. So let me tell you a little bit about this show, right? This show is Survivor meets The Challenge meets Who Done It, if you saw that back in the day, meets Big Brother's House, like all in one. <laughs> all in one. And it takes place in this huge castle in Scotland that looks like it's all sorts of transient energy in there. And they have all of these challenges that they have to complete in order to add money to this pot. And they're all competing for a quarter of a million dollars. That's right, a quarter of a meal. What could y'all do with a quarter of a meal right now, especially in today's society, right? So, they take these 21 contestants made up of reality icons. There's even a notable figure, somebody from the parliament. <laughs> I thought that was absolutely insane. But it's 21 contestants and they all come in as faithfuls, right? But in a meeting, a few of them are selected to be traitors. But no one knows who's selected. They're blindfolded. So each day, the team has to select a contestant to send home. A contestant that they feel like is a traitor. Once that individual is selected, that individual has to tell whether they're faithful or whether they're a traitor. Now here's the trick to the game. If at the end of the game, they've eliminated all of the traitors, then whatever they've accumulated from the challenges that's been added to the quarter of a meal, they get to split between all of the contestants who are faithfuls. But if at the end of the series, a traitor is still alive, the traitor takes it all. Y'all, this show is crazy. I'm telling you, I watched it for the first time a day or so ago, and I promise you I went through seven episodes, and I was like, oh my God, I got to react to this. I have to. So grab your glasses of champagne, make sure they're filled to the rim, dim your lights, cozy up by the fireplace. I already got the soft music playing for you, but let's get ready to get into it. So some of these contestants you may know, but I will tell you who's um, a contestant on this show. So you have Phaedra Parks, who's from The Real Housewives of Atlanta. You have Karsten Berge Bergerson, who's from Love Island, USA. You have CT from The Challenge. I love me some CT, y'all, for real. <laughs> and you have Dan, I think his last name is Giesling. He's from Big Brother. Deontay Wilder, who is a champion boxer. You have Ekin Sue, she was from Love Island, UK. You have Janelle, who was also from Big Brother. Johnny Bananas, anytime Bananas is on anything, I know it's gonna go crazy, because he was top tier on the challenge. Um, you have John Bercow, he's the one from the UK Parliament, and I just thought it was insane that someone actually from the parliament was on here because the parliament is nuts like insane um you have kevin creter from bling empire and i've never seen that show but you have larsa pippen she's from real housewives of miami um, marcus jordan who is actually the son of michael jordan he's on this show um Max Sim, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, so I'm not going to destroy it, but he's from Dancing with the Stars. You have Mercedes MJ from Shaws of the Sunset. You have Parvati Shallow, she's from Survivor. You have Peppermint from RuPaul's Drag Race. You have Peter Weaver, who's from The Bachelor. Um, Phaedra Parks is also from Married to Medicine as well. But you have Sandra Diaz Twine, she's from Survivor. You have Sheree Whitfield from Real Housewives of Atlanta. You have Tamara Judge from Real Housewives of Orange County. And you have Trishel from The Real World Las Vegas. So now you see who all the contestants are. And some of these shows I've seen. So I know some of these individuals can be absolutely cutthroat, like cutthroat. <laughs> so now that we know who's playing, let's get into episode one. It opens up with everyone riding to this castle. They are in Scotland and they are showing the most breathtaking scenery. Sc 
Scotland is absolutely gorgeous. Gorgeous. So Parvati is asked if there's anyone that she doesn't want to see on the show. And she states that she would prefer not to see Sandra. Now, apparently, Sandra and Parvati have some survivor beef as to who's the real queen of Survivor. And they haven't let it go. So it looks like we already have some rivalries that's going on before the show even starts. So Sandra says Survivor has prepared her for this show, honey, because she can look right in your face and lie to you and you wouldn't be none the wiser. (laughs) So they say they can't wait to see Alan to see what he's wearing. And honey, Alan is the host and they flash to him in his red outfit, leaning across this couch, looking out the window. Life, do you hear me? Jazzy, everything he is giving. So they're pulling up to the castle. And there are these cloaked men holding flags and a large gate opens up. There's fire along the pathways. And when they pull up to this gorgeous castle, there are men cloaked in these black robes in the front and they're beating on these drums. And child, the level of life I would have been given seeing all this up close. My eyes were glued to the TV because I love all things medieval. I'm everything medieval I'm there for it (laughs) that's why when I go to Vegas it's a must that I go to the tournament of kings I don't care how many times I go take me to the tournament of kings at Excalibur it's just a must (laughs) but then CT and banana see each other and if you ever seen the challenge then you already know that this is a long time rivalry I missed a lot of them, but when I saw these two on here, I said, oh, this is going to be good because Bananas and CT, top tier competitors, top tier, plus CT is fun and is, you hear me? (laughs) So the group is getting to know each other and they are walking down the stairs um, on the outside of the castle and introducing themselves to each other and all of a sudden these huge cannons go off and oh oh my god everybody is excited I would have been too I promise you Alan comes out and he welcomes them to the castle and he tells them they're about to engage in a vicious game of treachery deceit and murder (laughs) child this role was made for him it gives me Giles from Who Done It. If you watch that show, and um, it was only on for one season, and I hated it. I hated that they took it off because it was a really good show. It was really good. Somebody ought to really bring, really bring it back for real. But he tells them that the winner will walk away with a quarter of a million dollars, and he will hand select the ones who will be the traitors. And each night. The traitors will murder one of them in the cover of darkness. And it will be up to the faithfuls to weed them out and banish them. So he gives them the rules of the game. So then he tells them to head into the castle, right? But he tells them in this game, there are no BFFs unless unless it stands for betrayers, fakers, and fraudsters. So... They walk into the castle, and it is amazing. Uh, Trishel, CT, and Bananas head right for the bar. And you can already tell there are underlying issues there, right? I think it was a strategic move to put all of these people in one house that have a past, especially a past on competition shows, because you really know that the the competitor in them is really going to come to the forefront and make this an amazing show. So then you have Sandra, Parvati, and Peppermint. They end up in the billiard room, and you can tell that there's tension between Sandra and Parvati. Honey, when Sandra walked into that room, Parvati's whole countenance fell. (laughs) Each of them were on Survivor together, and I hate that I didn't get into Survivor more because I love watching shows that, you know, you got the opportunity to try to survive. Again, I said I love watching them because I couldn't do it. (laughs) I couldn't do it. My asthma could never. (laughs) Um, Peppermint tells them that the devil you know is better than the devil you don't know. 
and enemies can become friends. So they shake it out and they extend each other an olive, an olive branch. But Sandra lets it be known, honey, if I get one inkling that she trying to screw me over, it is game on. I will bury you. <laughs> so then it flashes to Phaedra and CT and they are in the dining room. And I'm glad Phaedra is on here, but y'all, Phaedra is something. She is something. She is not to be trusted. She acts pure and innocent, child, but she's not. She it is a front, definitely a facade. Please believe. <laughs> she's good TV though. Um, so they're looking at the pictures on the wall, and she points out to CT who Scotty Scotty Pippen's white, well, ex-wife is, and who Michael Jordan's son is, who happen to be in a relationship with each other, and they're together on the show. Now, I don't know if playing on the show about treachery and betrayal is good for a relationship, but then it could really test the solidity or how solid your relationship really is, right? We'll see. But I really wonder how this is on Scotty and Jordan's relationship. Your son is dating your friend's ex-wife. Now that's got to be interesting. What they should have done to make this show really exciting, they should have brought Scotty. (laughs) Now that would have really amped things up, right? So y'all, then they show this round table and I want one. I want a round table. (laughs) It doesn't have to be this big, but I want one that round table was everything um so all the contestants gather around the round table they show clips um, of alan talking to some of the contestants to see why they're there and whether they want to be faithfuls or traitors some really want to be traitors some say they um are better at finding them they have this celtic music playing in the background I think that's what it's called. Now, if I'm wrong, please let me know in the comments. (laughs) But the music really does fit. He tells them to look around the table because it's the last time they will be seen as equals. He tells them to put on their blindfolds and then he walks around and chooses the traitors. He tells them if they feel his hand on their shoulder, then they are a traitor. Can you imagine being blindfolded? and it's completely silent and you can't hear or see anything and you're waiting to see if someone is going to tap you on the shoulder now i'm really wondering do they know they're going to be traitors when they come on the show or is it really the suspense of it all and you find out when he taps you on the shoulder i really want to know because i probably would have been so panicked that i jumped as soon as he touched my shoulder I, i probably would have um you see dan from big brother get chosen And you also see Phaedra get chosen. So only two traitors are chosen. Alan tells them that all of the traitors are sitting amongst them. And everybody is looking around after they take off their blindfolds to see if they can tell who it is. So everyone is sitting there expressionless, trying not to smile, trying not to breathe, because they don't want to give away that they are traitors. And they don't want people to think they're traitors if they're really not. And I'm telling you, I don't know if I could have been this composed. I don't. But most of them have been on reality TV before. So they're used to lying (laughs) and scheming and conniving. So outside of John, though, who's on Parliament. But listen, we, we used to watch Parliament in high school. And honey, Parliament is wild. When I say what wild (laughs) it seemed like everybody on parliament was with the it's you know what i mean so some of them are stating that they are upset that they weren't picked as traitors in their confessionals and others are saying that they'll be able to spot the traitors just like that (laughs) alan tells them that the traitors will meet to decide who their first victim will be but that there is a twist And the twist is that the traders will have the opportunity to recruit one more person to become a trader. But the traders don't know who the other trader is yet. And baby, it begins because the accusations start flying as soon as those blindfolds come off. Child Janelle from Big Brother looks over at John and tells him that she can tell he's having some kind of breathing problems and she asks him if he's okay 
and he states that he's had that he has breathing problems and he's slightly asthmatic oh honey she was pushing <laughs> do y'all hear me pushing she was trying to insinuate that he might have started breathing breathing differently due to being chosen as a traitor And she felt Alan slowed down when he got to him so she could hear his breathing change. Girl, everybody was blindfolded. My heart would have been jumping out of my chest. I can't see. It's silent. And I know he's choosing people. Girl, everybody breathing was probably a little different. But everybody has to get under somebody's skin to see if somebody will fold. Y'all, this show is off the chain. So then you have Larsa from Real Housewives of Miami. She said she could hear Alan's jacket lift and it was to her left. Now to her left is Parvati. So I've never seen Real Housewives of Miami, but I feel like Larsa might've been hell on this show. (laughs) She said her ears are so strong she could feel the vibration of him lifting his jacket. Parvati is looking dumbfounded. She states that's a real good strategy for someone who's trying to appear not to be a traitor. Good response, Parvati. She tells her that she's really barking up the wrong tree. So everyone leaves the round table. They split up into different little groups and they're talking about who they think the traitors are. And listen, Larsa is really pushing that she thinks Parvati is the traitor because she was so defensive when she made the statement. If I was Parvati, honey, I wouldn't even responded to her. I would have just laughed. I would have just laughed. But Janelle then hones hold, in on thinking that it's John. And she says if she gets murdered, then she'll know it was him because she was the one who heard the change in his breathing. And she's asthmatic as well. So, y'all, Phaedra is just in the back blending in and listening to them talk. But she's a lawyer, so this is right up her alley. She could take it all if they're not careful because she has a game face out this world. (laughs) She said her strategy is to listen, to take notes, and to agree but not participate. That was real lawyer-esque of her. (laughs) So, y'all, then... Larsa and Ikin Sue, they start in on Karsten from Love Island because he's sweating and talking fast and turning red. And y'all, Bananas is cracking up. He is yelling, y'all, please get this man some water because they are pushing, and I mean pushing, to see if he will say he is a traitor. So then the bell rings, and they are heading to their first challenge. So they change clothes. And they head to this gorgeous lake. I mean, gorgeous. When I tell y'all the scenery, the scenery is absolutely breathtaking. I am a nature girl. And I am absolutely fascinated by all things water. So this first challenge has to do with the water. Alan welcomes them to the first mission. And he tells them that Tamara is not feeling well. So she's not going to be joining them. So for the first mission, they have to assemble a giant beacon that will be set ablaze after they gather all of the puzzle pieces, which are in the water, and assemble them together. Now, mind you, they have to assemble them in the water. So he states there's a replica image somewhere on the island, and once they figure out all the pieces and assemble them together, they have to press the lever to set it ablaze. They only have 40 minutes in order to do this correctly, and if they do, they'll add $30,000 to the prize money, but it's all or nothing. So if they don't make it, then they fail. They get nothing. So they all have on these helmets, And they have on these life jackets that look like bulletproof vests. (laughs) So they're also informed that also on the island are three shields that they can get. And if they get the shields, then they are protected instantly from being murdered by the traitors that night. So the next twist they hear is that they will have to start the mission tied up. And before they can begin, they need to be all untied. Y'all, when I tell y'all, 
when this mission started, they struggling with these ropes to get these ropes off. And then they start assisting each other in order to help get their ropes off. Ropes off. Now, Janelle, this heifer gets herself free. And she says she doesn't care about any of these people. She makes a beeline straight toward one of the shields that she see because she gonna protect herself from being murdered by the traitors. See, if I were a traitor, she would be the first one that I would try to get rid of because she's cutthroat. Since we know she's not a traitor, that means she would backstab everyone else to get to the end herself, even if it means that she has to sacrifice the others. Absolutely cutthroat. From this moment forward, I wouldn't trust her. I wouldn't trust her. Even if she would have untied at least one person and would have said, okay, then went for the shield. Then I would have been a little bit on her side, but she looked out for herself first. Can't trust you, girl. So I have my eyes on her. I really do. So now remember, they have to find the clue. They have to pull the barges or whatever you want to call them together, the puzzle pieces that are in the water. They have to pull them together to form the correct picture. So it can be set on fire within 40 minutes in order to add the 30,000 to the pot. So she gets her shield and she runs back. Alan is just chilling on this chair watching it all, <laughs> looking like a diva, honey. So you see two groups of four jump into boats and they're headed out into the water. Now the clue is hidden in a bottle. So some of the contestants will have to find the clue that's in the bottles while the others are in the water pulling the puzzle pieces that must be assembled, right? So you have MJ's son, and CT and Deontay and Max, they're in one boat and they are rowing, honey. <laughs> Their strategy is to go as far out as they can and try to bring a bunch of pieces back at the same time. Now these aren't small puzzle pieces, honey. They have ropes attached to them and they have to pull the ropes back. So then you have another team that's coming up on puzzle pieces and they're going to grab it and pull it back in. People are jumping into the water to swim to the puzzle pieces from each one of the boats. Um, I think there's about three boats in the water at this point, and they are swimming, honey, swimming and pulling these puzzle pieces. So all of these white specks are bottles with paper in them, and one of them contains the clue to what the pieces should look like when they're assembled. So they're going through all of these bottles trying to find the clue. Karsten or Bergy as they call him he's still tied up <laughs> and they trying to get this baby untied because remember in order to win, to win the money everyone has to be untied so they finally get him a tie, untied they have 20 minutes left and I mean they are moving on land and on sea they are moving to try to win this $30,000 which will be added to the quarter of a meal so Y'all, they go back to the water. See, T sees a shield in the water. And baby, when I tell you, he dives off that boat. <laughs> he dives off the boat into the water to go for that shield. I mean, he is haul assing in this water. Michael Phelpson, do y'all hear me? <laughs> so in the other boat, Deontay sees another shield. And there he goes into the water to try to get this other shield. So then it flashes back to land and they are tearing through these bottles. I mean, tearing through them to try to find this clue. Someone finally finds it and it is a picture of a shield. So they've pulled all the puzzle pieces in and now they have to arrange them correctly and tie them together and get back to the land in order to detonate the shield to see if they have it arranged correctly. Alan lets them know they only have 10 minutes left and it gets chaotic. Everyone is trying to give different instructions. Everyone is yelling different things. They're telling each other, just let one person give directions. They're down to two minutes and they telling everyone, just get in the water and start moving pieces. So they finally figure out how to arrange it like the picture and they have 33 seconds to make it to the land before the time is up 
Y'all, they are swimming their ass off. Swimming. <laughs> so they make it to the land and they detonate with one second left. I mean, one second on the clock. Literally. And the symbol is ignited. So that means they have actually won the challenge. So we have three people who are safe from being eliminated. Janelle, CT, and Deontay. So they end up winning the $30,000, right? So now they're riding back to the castle and they're trying to figure out who the traders may have been, whether the traders were the ones doing the most or the ones doing the least. See, that's the tricky part. See, a chick like me is real low key. I listen more than I speak. So I'm not one of those who are gonna be loud and speaking to everyone and all of that. That's just not me. I'm the one who's in the cut, kind of filling everybody out, you know? <laughs> that's me. So that's gonna be the tricky part, determining what is the behavior of the individuals who are actually the traders. So they made it back to the house. You have one group in the study, and Peppermint says that she has a lot of outfits that she wants to wear at the next dinner. Trishelle says she does too, so she knows if she gets murdered, then Peppermint is the traitor, just throwing it out there right. But she says she's just kidding, and honey, Peppermint says she can't, she can't tell. She looks absolutely appalled. Baby, Peppermint is offended, so <laughs> we go to the room with Janelle and Dan because they go off to themselves and they kind of team up together and they say that they have each other's back. He sits with Sandra as well. Nah, I don't trust Dan. See, I, I don't. I know he's a traitor, but I don't trust his traitoring because he's really setting up people that he's teaming up with. But it's the name of the game, so I kind of get it. But Dan is the kind of person that will stab anyone in the back, even himself, <laughs> if it means he gets to win. I pro he is absolutely diabolical. So the bell rings, and now it's bedtime. So they're all saying their goodbyes to each other and hugging each other just in case they don't make it to the next day. But... In the corner, kicking up more ish, is Trishel, of course, telling everybody about the moment she had with Peppermint and the reaction to her saying, if she doesn't make it, Peppermint did it. Oh, the worlds are messy, honey. The worlds are messy. Just rumor mills, speculation city. <laughs> so she's saying how weird Peppermint's reaction was. I don't think that it was a weird reaction, right? I think it was a, a reaction to you even putting that out there, knowing that we have to vote someone out. So why make people think I'm a traitor by even joking like that? So now it's time for the traitors to meet. Each one of them meet with Alan in the basement or dungeon or whatever this thing is, but it's amazing. <laughs> Alan asked Phaedra, if she's willing to murder someone every night. And Phaedra says she's a real killer, honey. <laughs> and if you ever saw the Real Housewives of Atlanta, then you understand she don't have a problem throwing anyone under the bus at all. <laughs> so then um, Alan asks Dan if he vows to keep him being a traitor a secret. And Dan lets him know he does. He said he'll be he'll keep it a secret. Now, I didn't see Alan on Big I'm sorry, Dan on Big Brother, but he just looks like a king cobra to me. He he looks like he will strike without notice or remorse. He gives me the old tale, if you pick up a snake and it bites you, you knew it was a snake when you picked it up. <laughs> but he'll cover it like he's really not but he just comes off real snakish to me so um they receive their cloaks and now they head to meet each other for the first time so um they start discussing who they can recruit once they meet each other so Phaedra sees that the other traitor is Dan Dan sees that the other traitor is Phaedra so they're trying to figure out who they can recruit to the dog side 
as Alan says, <laughs> and they're going through the names of who they're going to choose. Now, if it were me, it would have been between Sheree, CT, or Bananas. Now, Bananas, you'd have to watch because whereas Dan is a king cobra, Bananas is definitely a viper. Definitely a viper. You really have to watch him like a hawk and be ready to swoop in the minute you see a sign of betrayal because if you don't bananas is going to the end it's just who he is so Sheree was on Real Housewives and baby she can definitely play both sides and really stir some ish up if you watch the show you know she is the queen of stirring the pot <laughs> my first to go home would definitely be Janelle she would be the first because she was too much of a wild card. I would send a message to the rest of the contestants that I'm watching your gameplay. You can't be a traitor to the team if you're not a traitor. Yeah, she would have to go. But the problem is Dan is protecting her. He's protecting her so she can protect him not knowing that he's a traitor. See? Real Cobra behavior. <laughs> so for the recruit, they say it's between Parvati, Janelle, Sandra, and Larsa. And they signed the death certificate, but we don't know who it's going to be. So they give the death note to Alan. Then really part one ends. So if you haven't watched the show, you should really go and watch episode one of season two. It is amazing. If you have, Drop in the comments and tell me what you think about episode one. And stay tuned for the episode two recap. Confidants, always remember, if it doesn't cause you to elevate, it's causing you to depreciate. Now raise those glasses, clink, and let's drink till we meet again. Ta-ta.